Este es el donde yo, yo edité. En Leticia Claussen's dual language class at Denny International Middle School, eighth grade students are creating video public service announcements. Using iPads, they filmed and edited Spanish language messages about the importance of high school graduation. In the process, they developed collaboration and leadership skills and gained new appreciation for the work involved in creating media messages of their own. At Northgate Elementary School, Zach Stowell uses iPads in his classroom to support instruction across the curriculum. Here, fifth grade students are creating math lessons to teach other students what they've learned so well. Um, in like five months, I learned more than I love, learned in like four years. Because like before, I didn't know how to do fractions, I didn't know how to do decimals, I had really troubled with them, but now I learned it like so quickly. And that's the kind of excitement about learning that every teacher loves to see. Welcome now to Leticia and Zach. Good to have you here. You. In both your classes, you had students that are teaching other students things that they had mastered. Why is that important? Well, uh, especially for middle school, that's really important because they have moved from technology knowledge of knowing how to text somebody to technology literacy creating something that is going to affect the community and technology fluency which they are going to share with the world. So they are teaching each other steps that uh, they already know, somebody doesn't know how to do something, it builds a stronger community not only in the classroom but what they share with the outside of the classroom. How about with your students? This is the same thing going on in my classroom as far as my students uh, fourth and fifth grade uh, not only understanding the content enough to understand it but to create examples step-by-step uh, -step processes to support the learners in the classroom. Um, my students have uh, uh, worked together collaboratively the entire time uh, as well as thought critically and thought what are some mistakes that my, co my classmates may have that I can help them achieve um, success. And uh, one of the coolest things I think is for me, I tell the students that I'm learning from you as well. So I'm seeing what you're doing to reach your students. So I'm learning as a teacher from you as well as you teaching someone else. So there's, you know, lifelong learning going on all around us. And are they building confidence, the fact that they're able to share what they have mastered with somebody else? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, At least for the middle school kids, you know, I have four groups of students and uh, six kids in each group and they, were never hesitated when another group needed help, when they needed extra bodies to create the scene. It was a seamless effort uh, that I just stood back and, and loved it. Now, uh, your iPad project was part of a, a federal grant that was really aimed at reducing truancy. And uh, tell me more about that and also the PSA that, that was developed with that message. Well, uh, the, the truancy piece, uh, I have this group first and second periods and school begins at 740 mm -hmm. for middle school. Yeah. So for six consecutive weeks, my homeroom class got the attendance award. And it's because of this this project because I said you know we're doing this project about truancy so we need to be here you know how can we talk about something that, that we're not doing <laughs> exactly. so that, yeah. it was amazing six consecutive weeks you know and I said well let's we've learned this let's keep going and get the other six weeks of, of trophies so cool. it impacted their their, their attendance and their um, attention you know they were really attentive to what it was that was happening and they had to be accountable and responsible and to live up to oh, what they yes. were talking about and the yeah. content you know they did some research we saw a lot of PSAs online and uh, created scripts and see if the message was not biased and who was going to look at it so the um, the, the accountability for each yeah. student wa was unbelievable. I was say, to generate such ideas to be able to say, how can I reach these people for them to listen? And all those editing processes had to be amazing for your, for yes. your group, so definitely. And, and they soak it in, because yeah. then they think they that. They do, yeah. they do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, so, I was just going to say, we're going to send this PSA to students in Cuba. Oh, really? Yes, because we have a project with Cuba. Is it like a pen pal type it of is. thing? It is, paper and pencil, but <laughs> this time, you know, there's no iPad oh, there. Oh, that's but, um, instant digital. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and global. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, your co-teacher, uh, Vanessa Garcia, she also had to master some new skills in all of this. Uh, what was that experience like for her? <laughs> well, um, Vanessa Garcia and I, when, when uh, I was first approached to do this project, I saw all kinds of possibilities. And I didn't even ask Vanessa. I just went ahead and said, yes. And so I explained to Vanessa, and she said, oh, wonderful. This, this looks great. So she teaches world geography. And um, the possibilities of using an iPad with world geography are just, uh, there are no borders. You can just go anywhere. Uh, she was able to, um, as far as the technology part for this project, she was able to, um, to edit, learn editing techniques that needed to be passed on to the students and take on all the tutorials we both did. So it was a huge learning curve for both of us. Now, Zach, how about you? As far as uh, using the iPads mm -hmm. in your classroom, what, tell me about that. How uh, that's... We're pretty fortunate. I applied for a grant through Lowe's, uh, the, the home store, uh, and they saw a need. Normally, they do like construction around their school or something, but I said, you know, we have a real lack of technology for these kids, and I see it's truly important for their future. And they supported like a $20,000 grant for my students, and uh, we've implemented iPads all year long, uh, whether it's enrichment with uh, um, certain programs to support like math and science or uh, what we've done all year long was all these reportings uh, creating educations um, and basically the students are uh, taking a content and it's really cool because I the way the project started is I said what have we learned this year and the kids literally recalled every target that I've taught and I said okay what can you do to teach someone something else right so uh, each kid selected a, uh, a target and they said here's what I can do um, I said make examples um, give non-examples, like really be able to teach it. Uh, and they felt so confident in learning all this new information that they just wanted to share it with everyone. Um, and they had to design the slides, they had to edit and speak over it. Um, and then we can email it to parents, we can email it to coworkers, we can share it with other students. Um, we share it with each other. Um, and recently we've jumped on a thing called Edmodo, which is a social, um, it's a classroom, almost like very similar to Facebook, but it's 100% around um, learning and I'm able to reach my students at home um, by putting certain content on the, uh, online for them to reach. So when they come in the morning, they check their Edmodo, they get right to work, and it's just one of those things to where the technology has just sped up um, the amount of information we can reach. So it really broadens your ability as teachers and yes. to do so much more. And to reach every kid. Um, I have um, students of special needs that created amazing educations. I've got students that are English language learners that feel confident that I can teach someone. I struggle, but I can teach someone. I've got students uh, of all academic level that are creating uh, content uh, that is helpful for another person. And how does all this help you in, in trying to reach standards? You know, we hear so much about standards in, in education these days and, and getting there and getting your kids there. Well, for, for middle school, you, you're so aware of the standards for reading, writing, math, and science. And technology is just somewhere out there, you know? And uh, so this project has, has made me look into all the technology learning targets and objectives. And uh, they are very parallel to what reading needs to do, you know? the the type of accountability and, and uh, strategies that kids need to develop in order to create a PSA. So, um, yeah, it, we, we're using all the standards. Yeah, I'd say the same exact way. Um, as far as the technology standards, as far as being innovative and understanding citizenship um, and being safe on the internet, that's kind of like the standards for the three mm -hmm. through five, uh, learning how to uh, create, uh, how to share, and how to share safely. Yes. Um, so as far as the technology standards, that's, we've been hitting that with every concept. Mm -hmm. And as far as math, you know, everything we've applied, um, you know, we use it for reading too. We did research projects uh, on, you know, presidents, on states, and uh, the kids are, you know, simply applying the knowledge. Instead of answering uh, a mathematical question, they're creating their own examples and sharing it. There's, so, a, there's this hands-on yeah. aspect to this that I think probably helps these kids, particularly in this 21st century, as you need to have so many broad skills. Yeah. And I would say, I mean, to add to that, how do I compete with, you know, an Xbox or with the PSP? I mean, they're plugged in nonstop, you know, and it's good to get outside and do all the, uh, the recesses and the, the PEs, um, but to compete with those things, what I've done is I've made it a digital classroom. 
and the kids are 100% engaged at all times. Um, and it's because they have that freedom of creativity. The global aspect, Cuba. Tell me about oh, that. Oh, the global aspect is just amazing because, you know, we, always, we need to globalize instruction. We need to globalize everything. And when I started the project with Cuba, it was because I want my students to see how other people you know, around the world live, how, the, how they speak, how they sound. And uh, so the, the globalizing that takes place, it, it goes far beyond the expectation of, of what the standard says. I need to rewrite that standard. I need to rewrite the, the, what the goals are, are telling me because the, the students are, um, it goes past the linguistic uh, approach or the technology, it, it touches on culture and, um, and responsibility of what it is, how you're going to represent yourself. Humanistic. Yes, yeah. with, with other people. And through the PSA, it's um, what messages will be appropriate or not appropriate to share with kids around the world. Uh, I, I sense this energy that, that you two have for this and for your kids, and there must be an emotional connection that you feel about it as well. I mean, technology is one thing, and we often talk about how it can, you know, pull us away to be just singular, right. but yet it probably isn't in what you're doing. Well, yeah. uh, as he no. was saying that, you know, all the kids are engaged in the, in the technology class, and, and for us, we, we had um, two iPads for 25 kids mm -hmm. and two teachers, so we were all engaged at, this, at the same time, but um, the reason, uh, the, the connection that you're talking about, I have seen it. The, for my eighth graders, this is the third year that I've had my eighth graders. I, I had them first in sixth graders, so I had them every year. So when they first come to me, um, I don't expect uh, uh, this extreme to, for them to put me on a pedestal and that I am this goddess that they have to respect. You are, though, aren't you? Uh, of course, <laughs> but, you know, they don't know that yet. <laughs> and uh, so I, you know, it, it's a give and take. This, this um, respect is, I'm not entitled to their respect. I need to earn their respect. I need to learn their names. They need to learn how to spell my name, how to say it, what's appropriate. It's a give and take. So um, that relationship, when, when you have the, the students for three years in a row, it's solid. It, it is simply solid. So when I presented the PSA that we're going to do something against dropping out of school, 100% buy-in. Yeah. There's just no, no, no doubt about it. For me, it's, it's engaging. How do I get my students not just to think from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m.? Or, you know, so you know, the technology has got them not only excited about learning in school, but at home with technology. Uh, this week alone, I had, um, I think, three kids were sick. And I posted some online uh, quizzes and online uh, lessons, and they completed all of them. So there's thinking going on at home about technology that's, you know, this is excitement about learning, you know. And for, for my population of high needs, you know, once you get that, that snowball rolling down the avalanche towards learning, and it's exciting to learn instead of, you know, being okay with not knowing, you know, uh, that changes a whole community. Um, so for me, that's one of the driving factors. I mean, and also, um, personally, uh, I've got friends that work at, you know, Amazon, you know, Microsoft, uh, Google, um, you know, Boeing. And as I look in the future and I see, uh, or as I look towards my students, where are their places in the future, I just don't know if we're preparing our students to be using these technology, te you know, using technology in these fields. So how can I get these students prepared <laughs> thinking about the technology to be our future workforce in Seattle metro area? So that's my driving. I want to get our kids working in our companies around here um, because my friends that work there are from all over the United States. Right. So how do we groom our future employees? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? And responsible. And responsible. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you for your work. It's clear that uh, what you're doing is uh, really preparing these kids uh, for so much in the future here and getting them ready for their careers and lives down the down the road here. Now let's hear what students themselves have to say about their own future as we watch one of the public service announcements created by Leticia's eighth graders. When I grow up, I want to be.
Please help our dual language students prepare for their future. Gracias. Gracias. Danny International Middle School.